Okay, uh, so a couple of days back I needed to come up with a topic for my talk and I thought this was a catchy name, Blockchains Beyond Crypto Assets. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to talk about that at all, uh, but uh, I will be talking about cryptocurrencies and how they relate to crypto assets, what's the difference between a cryptocurrency and a blockchain, and some comparison to the current financial system that we have in place. Um, how we will be able to compose businesses in the future, and finally, how Monarium, uh, the company I'm rep representing, fits into this uh, picture. Um, so, uh, maybe I'll go one slide back, uh, but first things first, uh, who am I? I'm Gisli Christians. Uh, I've been involved in this space for some time now. I first got acquainted to Bitcoin in 2013, thought I was a little bit late to the scene, but it turns out I was probably ahead of the curve. Um, I, I, I had a business partner and I persuaded him that we needed to become a Bitcoin and blockchain company. So we started talking to everyone who opened their mouth about Bitcoin and blockchains in general. Uh, it turned out there were not, uh, not that many of them back then. Uh, one of the few people was Svet Walfels, who was here in the room. Uh, say hi, Svet. Uh, he was actually going into Bitcoin mining, and the only logical thing to do was to incorporate the company with him and a few other colleagues. Uh, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I've been doing various software prog uh, pro uh, uh, programs over the course of the last decade or so. Uh, I've been a business consultant and uh, traded bonds for a couple of years, so uh, yeah, master of none. Um, so, uh, how did we get here? And by we, I'm referring to Monarium. Um, so, Swayton was living in London in 2011, and where he made his first Bitcoin transaction. Uh, he's been uh, co-sponsoring conferences all over the world. In 2013, uh, we wrote a report about Bitcoin mining and estimated uh, the electricity consumption and what was a hat. Uh, sort of the projections were within error bounds. Uh, we've been talking both locally and globally about Bitcoin and blockchains. In 2015, we founded the company with one of the Icelandic banks. Uh, and uh, four co-founders. We have been presenting and writing reports, and finally we identified uh, our business opportunity, which I'm going to reveal later, later in this talk. Uh, this slide is supposed to show that we've been thinking about blockchains for, for a long, long time. <laughs> uh, so our thinking has been changing a lot as well. So what are blockchains? What is cryptocurrency? And I think everyone who has been involved can sort of agree with me that it seems like every two months you see this thing in a completely different light. Um, so if I were to capture the key essence or the key insight of what blockchains enable, I would probably say something like, for the first time in history, value can be stored and transferred over the internet without intermediaries like email. Okay, so one might think we, we have that, right? I can use PayPal or my credit card for online transactions and it seems pretty sweet, right? Uh, yes and no. Yes, but it's an illusion. The complexity of what's behind is enormous. Just uh, so we have to separate the authorization of a transaction, which happens when you when you purchase something off of Amazon or or some other seller, uh, and the clearing and settlement of the actual value, which can take weeks to end up in the seller's account. Um, even like. Uh, completely plain vanilla wire transfers. I have a colleague who was, uh, is living in the States and he, is, uh, he was purchasing a real estate in Denmark. And after some days they realized that the transaction got lost due to human error. 
and 20 days later the matter got resolved by returning it to the sender's account. So th it, it's a complete spaghetti of uh, systems that need to be reconciled uh, in order to function. And it, it, it is actually amazing that the world actually works. Uh, so, I mean, we have high-frequency trading, where you can do trades many, many, many times per second. But when, when you want to actually clear the trade, it takes three days. And why is that? It's because you ha have to have all your assets with a custodian. And this custodian is going to tell you what you can and what you can't do. And his view of the trade needs to match the custodian of the buyer. And these two systems need to match. For all this to synchronize and reconcile, it just, it's so much work. So sending value somewhere today is by no means like sending an email, although by illusion it feels like that. Uh, so blockchains. Blockchains are essentially a new financial type of networks. In the same way that social media is a new type of communication networks. The comparison with the internet uh, is something that I would like to touch upon. Uh, if, if we go back in history, when the internet was kind of coming up from the grassroots, there were other centralized alternatives. I'm referring to AOL, woo, AOL and systems like that, CompuServe. And these systems were way, way, way better than, than the decentralized internet. I mean, you'd have a functioning email, which didn't happen for a long time for the internet. Uh, you'd have a built-in search engine, uh, which you know, took many, many, many years for the internet to sort of figure out how to do. But the thing about decentralization and uh, the sort of the, the, what's being referred to as permissionless innovation, whereby anyone who wants to build upon this open and transparent network is allowed to do so. This means that you can have two engineers or two, two college, college students in, in a garage wanting to create a search engine, and they didn't have to ask anyone, anyone a permission. They didn't have to make any agreements with, uh, with, uh, with CompuServe. They just did download to the internet and had a search algorithm, and voila, you had Google. And when, you have, when you're competing with the mind share of the world, it's kind of hard to win. I mean, and I can see the same similarities between blockchains and the internet and the permissionless innovation. Uh, okay, so we have Bitcoin and we have altcoins, the sort of experimentation of blockchains, different kinds of blockchains, uh, where in some cases, you will be tweaking a minor thing, the hashing algorithm or something like that. And in other cases, you'll be tweaking much, much more for privacy settings and such. So today, we have over 1,500 different types of uh, blockchains. And probably some of them will, be, will come, uh, come on top, uh, and many of them will die out. But we'll probably see real progress as a, scenario, uh, as a resolution of that. Uh, cryptocurrencies as well, I mean, what are they? What, what, what is a Bitcoin? Is it a currency? Is it an asset? Is it, what, what is it? And everyone seems to have an opinion. And these opinions have been uh, changing over the course of the years. I think today I, I, there, there is a consensus about calling these crypto assets as a more general term for representing uh, not only currencies, but assets as well. Uh, and then you have tokens, and one of one of the blockchains that uh, uh, one of the altcoins, Ethereum, namely, uh, is introducing smart contracts. I'm not going to touch very uh, much upon that, but with the advent of smart contracts, you could start to issue your own tokens and experiment. So, as as a user of the system, you could issue your own tokens. Bitcoin was designed to uh, transact in only one token, but in Ethereum and other blockchains, you can have many, many different kinds of tokens. And they can represent anything or nothing. So it's a, it's a big experimentation. We're still very, very early. 
uh, but things are progressing at lightning speeds. And talking about that, one of the things that interests me the most these days uh, are atomic swaps. And I'll tell you why I think these are important. I think atomic swaps and decentralized exchanges will enable sort of the next phase with blockchains, which are composable business models. I'll go a little bit deeper into that later. But uh, here, sort of what people are t trying to solve is, is the concept of if there are two different tokens on a blockchain, how can I be sure that if I send Jason some token and he says he's going to send me another one, that this happens? Today, most of the crypto exchanges happen very, very similarly to sort of the old world, whereby I need to uh, surrender my tokens or my fiat currency to the custodian, which is usually the, the exchange. The exchange then allows us to do trades, which is just a way to separate or, or split up the cake, uh, split up the portfolio of assets in a new way. But I still need to trust that entity. And we've had many, many hacks where this you know, custodian didn't live up to standards. But with this new technology, we will be able to programmatically send a token, an asset, somewhere and have it exchanged without needing to trust anyone, just like the basic principle behind Bitcoin and other blockchains. So when we will have those systems in place, we will essentially have a trustless uh, decentralized exchange, which, which will act as a component to the, and, and it's going to be programmable to, to the general ecosystem. And there is a trend now for assets, different uh, old asset classes to be tokenized. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, tokenizing an asset is a method to try to uh, uh, identify or present uh, an asset on, on the blockchain. It could be real estate, it could be something else. In order for them to have many of the same characteristics as Bitcoin and other crypto assets, for them to be able to be, to be exchangeable. So you have physical assets, you have gold being represented on the chain, you have commodities, real estate, it will all live on blockchains in these new new business networks. You'll have purely digital assets like shares, flight tickets, loyalty points. And this will allow for uh, assets be ex being exchanged programmatically and without trust. So this is the point where, where, which I was alluding to. So blockchains will allow for composable business models. And what I mean by that is today, any modern software uh, development I mean, we're using open source, we're using libraries, we're using APIs, we're essentially standing on the shoulders of giants. I wouldn't be able to create a mobile app without these tools. So, and when you, when you have those uh, blockchains and you have businesses where you have a clearly defined uh, purpose, your core sort of competency uh, or the core contribution, you have pluggable units of, uh, that, which you can use in your own, uh, to your own advantage. So let's imagine I'm a software developer and I wanted to create a payments app. Today, I either need to become a bank or partner with a bank and I have no saying in how things, goes, how, how things go. In this new world that I envision, you will have pluggable units where you can sort of take the, the currency, and you don't need to be a specialist on that, it's just going to become a new asset, new API for you to incorporate into your app, just like existing software components. And you will be able to send them uh, with the user's uh, permission into a decentralized exchange and have them come out as, you know, you send dollars in and get euros on the other end. And this will all be programmable uh, by a single software developer. So I'm very excited for uh, the future. So I told you I was going to <laughs> tell you how Monarium fits into this. So we at Monarium, we are uh, introducing a token, a fiat currency component, 
which essentially is a representation of normal currencies. Uh, we founded the company in 2015 by four co-founders in a bank. Now we're a team of 12 and growing. We started as a software startup uh, with an interest in blockchains, but we're becoming a regulated financial institution using blockchain, so uh, who would have known? Uh, we have an asset-backed fiat currency token, one token per currency, so dollars, euro, pounds, etc. We are essentially, if any of you know Tether, we're essentially Tether regulated and redeemable, the first solution in the world that we know of, uh, doing it this way. Uh, and the use cases would be uh, for cryptocurrency exchanges and traders, future security settlements, payments, like I referred to, and a whole new set of completely distributed apps in the future. So thank you and uh, cheers.